everyone, and welcome back to Leatherneck Insider, our first episode of the spring semester. I'm Austin Holznagel. And I'm Peyton Hutchins. Former Leatherneck football player Colin Saunders will be appearing in the Super Bowl this year as a member of the Kansas City Chiefs. Leatherneck Insider President Johnny Jazarowski got the chance to interview Saunders about his career thus far and the opportunity to play in the big game once again. Former Leatherneck Colin Saunders is headed to his third Super Bowl appearance in his four-year career. Saunders played at Western from 2014 to 2018 as a defensive tackle. Saunders was then drafted the following year in the third round, 84th overall, by the Kansas City Chiefs. 2019 NFL Draft, the Kansas City Chiefs select Kalen Saunders, defensive tackle, Western Illinois. I had the chance to speak with Saunders about the opportunities given to him by Western and how his time as a Leatherneck has helped him throughout his professional career. To always uh, give Western that credit of, of getting me to this level and, you know, just um, offering me, honestly, because they had, you know, that faith in me to allow me to chase my dreams playing Division One football. And um, now, you know, I'm a forever represent the, the purple and gold and, you know, so I shout it out when I get the chance, you know, wearing it during the Super Bowl, all of that, because um, that, that's what got me here in the first place. Transitioning from college football into the NFL isn't easy. It takes a lot of hard work and being able to pay attention to the details. The speed and technique that you got to play with, because um, it, it's like at this point, everybody's fast. Everybody has good um, athleticism and good natural ability. This is about who pays attention to the details the most. And I think that also you know, kind of shows you or talk, speaks to uh, why the Chiefs have made it to this uh, level this many years in a row. Saunders talks about how playing alongside guys like Frank Clark and Chris Jones has helped him improve his game and his health. I've been lucky, man. I've, I've been lucky and blessed to just be able to be in that room, get to kind of outside of the, just the plan, outside of um, the skills needed within the white lines. I mean, just learning how to be a professional, you know, learning how to be a pro, learning how to, um, you know, take care of my body out in the off season. Uh, that, like, for example, that was one of my biggest things this year. And that was um, something that Chris and those guys kind of guided me with. I was training a lot in the off season with Frank. Saunders will be playing in his third Super Bowl this week on February 10th against the Philadelphia Eagles. Saunders talks about what accomplishing this goal means to him. Always, some, it's always an accomplishment that um, that we're trying to get to. Um, you know, that's the ultimate goal for every team, and uh, and um, you know, to be able to be say I'm lucky enough to have done it this many times. Um, you know, it's it's, a, it's an understatement. Reporting for Leatherneck Insider, I'm Johnny Jazarowski. What a cool interview and what an opportunity! Good luck to the Super Bowl, Colin. Speaking of Colin Saunders, did you know that Saunders played with former Leatherneck receiver Tony Tate? Did you also know that Tate's brother, Toriano, is this week's Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week? Jack Bell has more on Toriano. Welcome back to another edition of Leatherneck Insider Athlete of the Week. I'm Jack Bell, here with Toriano Tate. Toriano, first off, congratulations on winning the award. Thank you, thank you. So we look at your numbers here, a freshman third place in the meet and long jump and now eighth all time. What's it like for you, especially being in your first year of college competition and now having these features to go along with yourself? Um, it feels pretty good to like pick up where I left off at. I always knew that like I couldn't leave off losing that state in high school, so I just want to come out here and do the best I could. And how are things going? You know, new atmosphere, you're a freshman. How are you blending in with the team and how's your teammates and everything? How do you guys get along with practices and competition? I think that we all push ourselves a lot in practice. We always encourage each other, and the team is pretty small, so it's like everybody's kind of close already, and I know we just try to get the job done. Absolutely, and you know, one thing stands out, family ties. You mentioned your cousin, Mike Newman, plays football here, and then your brother, Tony Tate, uh, had a great career here as a Leatherneck. What's it like, you know, coming to a school where your family ties run deep and having that rich, rich tradition of success here? What's that like for you to compete here at this level? I mean, honestly, it just feels like home. Everybody came here, agreed to me gave me a good time, showed me around and everything, and it just feels great. Awesome. And, you know, what's one thing you're, you know, you're looking forward to going into the back end of the winter season and then into your first spring season here at Western Illinois? Um, just trying to improve, just get way better, try to actually get the record instead of eighth and just work from there. 
Awesome. With Leatherneck Insider, I'm Jack Bell. Congratulations, Toriano. When we come back, there is some noise being made from more than just one team here at Western. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. It's not W. It's not W. It's W. 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 That's what I've been stressing out about the most so far. It's <laughs> saying W because I know it's something you're going to say. Right? Yeah, we better. Yeah. They said, they're like, we're waiting on, what are we I'm waiting on? Yeah, it's set. Right, we're ready to go, we can start. Bye. Hello everyone, I am Will Thomas. And I'm Dane Mackley. Welcome to this week's edition of Weather Next Insider. Welcome back, WIU. It was a historic weekend for the WIU tractor field team last week as they divided and conquered in the Mayo Invite in South Bend, Indiana at the Catch Select in Bloomington, Illinois. The women's distance medley relay kicked things off in South Bend, breaking a 41-year-old school record and finished second in the event. Madison Trevina, Brisa Durr, Malia Hudson, and Paulina Westerfeld broke the record at, by .24 seconds. Over in Bloomington, freshman Arnie Gruner broke the pole vault school record and took home first place in the event, jumping 5 meters. The record was previously 4.91 meters, set by Andy Ryan in 2008. The team currently in Michigan is currently in Michigan competing in the GVSU bid meet and then will look to prepare for the Summit League Championships February 24th and 25th. Speaking of breaking records, the West Illinois men's basketball team has been the talk of the town. After coming off of a five-game winning streak, the Lenex sit in third place in the Summit League with a conference record of 8-5. and five. The eight wins in the Summit League is the most since the 2012-2013 season. Part of their success has come from Trenton Masner, who has been getting recognized at the national level. My partner Peyton Hutchins has more on who they are calling the Maz. Western Illinois men's basketball player Trenton Massner averaged 33 points in three games during the week of January 23rd, earning him National Player of the Week honors by both College Insider and USBWA Oscar Robertson. Massner's huge week put the Leathernets in the top of the Summit League standings. Here's what Massner had to say about receiving the honor. Um, it's kind of, it's a, um, a tremendous honor, I guess. I never thought I would ever be in consideration for that, but um, it was a great week for Western, and I think it's it's nice that I feel like it's more of a team uh, award than it is an individual award, and so I guess it makes our team look better, so I'll take it. Messner also talks about the expectations for the rest of the season. Um, as a team, I expect us to just keep on improving every game. Um, and be able to uh, try to compete and for the conference title and tournament. Um, that's really all I care about at this point. And um, I feel like individually, um, just do my part for to be able to make that happen. Reporting for Leather Night Insider, I'm Peyton Hutchins. Masner is close to the 1,000 point mark as a Leatherneck and has only been here for two years. The men's team is in action today at Western Hall at 2 p.m. against conference leader Oral Roberts. We now send it over to Caden Strands, who has more on the women's basketball team. Caden, what has it been like over for the men's women's team? Caden, the Western Illinois women's basketball team season is winding down. With just two weeks left in conference play, I talked with head coach J.D. Gervina, as well as Elizabeth Lutz and Alyssa Dins to recap what will help this team down the home stretch. I think we need to keep improving on the things. We can't just be happy that we've made some improvements, um, really guarding hard um, and, and maybe switching a little bit more on the ball when, when teams come off brush screens and, and little dribble outs. Um, and then really kind of refocus on rebounding. I thought we had made some major improvements on rebounding. And again, the Dakota teams are pretty big and strong, but kind of refocusing on making sure we're winning those one-on-one -on -one battles or boxing out or having really good effort on the boards. Guard Elizabeth Lutz likes what she's seen recently and believes the team is heading in the right direction. I think we've been taking a lot of steps in the right direction, especially um, as of late. So I think just to keep kind of putting her head down and grinding each day in practice, 
sometimes I think whenever you get to the end of the season, teams try to do a lot of different things and try to switch things up going into the tournament or change a lot of things once they get into postseason. Um, and sometimes it's successful, and sometimes that comes back to bite teams. So I think just kind of um, doing just doing our best and, and whatever performance that we're set up or whatever strategy we have going into a game, just really trying to maximize our effort and um, our communication, kind of the, those intangible things that coaches preached and uh, not necessarily straying away from our identity as a team and our culture as a team, but uh, sticking to what we know and kind of doubling down on Western basketball. Center Alyssa Dins focuses more on the defensive side. I think just continuing to work really hard on D and lockdown on D, because I think that always helps and transfers over on the offensive end. And so I think just putting an emphasis on that and playing good team defense. The team will close out the season with three straight home games beginning next Saturday, all at Western Hall. Back to you, Austin and Peyton. Thank you, Peyton. Hopefully the Western Illinois team can finish out on a high note. We'll be right back after the break. Here, I engineer the future. Here, I have countless opportunities. Here, I do research. Right here at Western. Welcome back to Leatherneck Insider. The WIU baseball team kicks off their season on February 17th at Southern Indiana. The Leathernecks have made a lot of changes to their roster and Leatherneck Insider reporter Avery Thompson has more on these additions. The 2023 baseball season is starting and the roster has added many new faces as well as some changes in the coaching staff. Head coach Taylor Sheriff steps up for the Leathernecks expressing his thoughts and goals on this new position. It's been fun. Uh, it's been a fun transition. It's been hectic. Uh, we've been you know, certainly busy, you know, July 1st is when the transition happened and, you know, there's a lot of things that had to take place in a very timely manner there with getting our roster finalized, getting our coaching staff in place. With these new additions, the expectations are high for the team as the veterans are helping lead the Leathernecks to victory. I think there's a lot of new guys, new faces, they're excited, they're excited to be here and we have a lot of good returning guys too, so uh, our leadership has really come a long way and, you know, we have really high expectations for really all those newcomers, but also the returning guys that have been here and understand what it takes to win in the Summit League. Coach Sheriff and the coaching staff are going into the spring looking back on the fall season, talking about how they were able to learn how to win as a team. I think we learned how to compete. Um, we learned a lot about our team, a lot about our personnel. Um, but our, our big thing for, you know, as a coaching staff is we wanted to come in, really lay the foundation early in the first couple weeks of what we wanted our team identity to be, what we wanted to be philosophically and then take a really extended period of time to learn how to compete and learn how to win, and I think we've done a good job of that. The Leathernecks home opener at Alfred D. Boyer Stadium is set for a one-game set March 14th as they welcome McKendree University. Thank you, Avery. Going from the dirt to the court, the WIU women's tennis team is off to a hot start. The team is currently 3-2 and two and has tied their win total from last season already. The team is coming off a 7-0 loss to Southern Illinois Edwardsville, but will look to bounce back today as they take on the University of Dayton in Ohio at 1.30. Now switching to the high school level, Macomb High men's basketball continued their impressive winning streak after defeating Illinois Central Valley on Wednesday 73-45. The Bombers are tied with Farmington for first in the Prairie Land Conference standings. With only three games to go and none of those being conference matchups, the Bombers have a great opportunity to finish the season strong. Staying with the Bombers, Macomb High women's basketball capped off their season strong with a five-game win streak defeating Illini West 44-22. The Lady Bombers finished the season 18-11, improving from their 13-13 record last season. They also finished the season fourth in the Prairie Land Conference. IHSA postseason play begins today. And when we return, Schoolboy is back, but this time he has a new approach. You won't want to miss it. your vision. My goal is to work at a top 100 television station as a reporter, anchor, and a producer. Our mission. 
Thanks to Western, I have a resume that would beat out most students from the top journalism schools in the country. This is Western Illinois University. I am a success story. I am a Leatherneck. Thank you for staying tuned in. Rob Jeter has had a challenging but successful season by having a lot of new players come to the program. Here's what Coach Jeter had to say about this year's team compared to last year's. Well, one of the obvious things is last year's team, we got off to a great start. Um, and then towards the conference season, you know, kind of lost our way. This year, we didn't, we didn't start off as hot as last year's team, but we found our, our way late. So. Does it mean one team is better than the other? I, I don't know. Um, I do think our ability to defend with this team is a little different. Our ability to score with last year's group was way better. So put it all together, and we've had two pretty good teams. Staying on the hardwood, it's now time for Stoolboy Sports. But this time, he's interviewing a special guest. We now present to you the newest episode of Stoolboy Sports. All right, everyone, welcome back to another episode of Stool Boy Sports. This time, I have a special guest with me, freshman basketball player, Addie Brownfield. Addie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, thank you. So you've been here about six months now. What's your favorite part about Macomb? Um, I would say my favorite part of Macomb is just uh, the grit of all the student athletes here. Um, you know, they go through a lot, and we all just stick together, and we keep pushing. I think that's a really special thing about Macomb. Um, and what's your favorite meal or favorite place to visit in Macomb? I would definitely have to say Los Charos. I love chips and queso with a good Dr. Pepper to go with it. That's my favorite in Macomb so far. Pretty good, pretty good choice. Uh, so, Addie, where did your love for the game of basketball start? Um, well, growing up, my brother always played and I would go to his games ever since I was three years old. And I started at a really early age, about probably five years old, I would say. And, um, you know, I just loved it ever since and never turned back. And um, so tell me a little bit about what your freshman year has been like basketball-wise. Like, what's the team been like? How do you feel season's going? That sort of thing. Well, obviously, I knew coming in first year at a, the Division One level, I knew it'd be difficult. But um, I've just kind of embraced the challenge, you know, embraced the beauty and the struggle. And I've I feel like I've come out on the good end of it, you know, got the starting position and all that. So I'm just really excited to see where the end of this season takes us and excited to see where the next three years takes us too. Uh, what was the transition like from high school to D1? Uh, it was a lot. Um, you know, I've always played super competitive basketball growing up, but, um, you know, the, the competition level, the athletes at the D1 level, you know, everyone was the best player on their high school team. So um, just kind of adjusting to that and figure out the new role on the Division One court. And one final question for you, Addie. If you had to go to dinner with one person, dead or alive, who would it be and why? Oh, gosh. Um, I would probably, I would have to say Coach K from Duke. I would love to pick his mind about the game and his philosophies. So. And there you have it, Coach Kate from Duke. Well, thank you, Eddie, for joining me, and I will see you guys next week on another episode of Stool Boy Sports. Great interview, Peyton. And Peyton, I love seeing those types of interviews. We saw some from Jay Billis, the 94 feet walk. It's just a great way and approach to learn more about a player outside of just their sport. Yeah, you know, I kind of wanted to uh, shake up my segment a little bit, get to know the athletes more than just in their sport, more than like, outside their sport. And I think this is a great opportunity for me to get other people involved and to let other people know what the athlete is about and stuff like that. Well, I hope to see more this season. And that's all the time we have for you today. We will see you right back here next week. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at InsiderWIU. For Leatherneck Insider, I'm Austin Holznagel. And I'm Peyton Hutchins. Have a great week, WIU.